the library here in King's Cross. Not the actual library, I'm talking about a library in this amazing hotel. There's also an incredible garden here. If we have time, I'll show you in a minute. I haven't seen you guys for a few weeks, so I had the best idea for a video today. We'll catch up on the walk to the bus stop. Okay, let's go. I had to leave, I was getting way too comfortable in there. This is the incredible garden, by the way. Take a look at this. So I thought today we'd head over to Kensington, which is in the borough of Kensington and Chelsea. I heard about this incredible Japanese garden in Holland Park. Even though I've been to Kensington loads, I've never ever actually visited the Japanese garden. It sounds incredible. So we're gonna go there. What we're gonna do after that, I don't know, but I'm gonna head over to the Japanese garden and just take it from there. See if it's amazing as they say it is. <laughs> We're out. Why is it every single time we film a video in London, it's gloomy, it's raining. Still looks really nice and pretty in Kensington. I think Holland Park is about 10, 15 minutes away from here. Best get my skates on. Need I say, the only real residences around Kensington are lived in by millionaires, famous people. You get some offices here as well, but it would be quite rare for a regular person to, to live in Kensington. If you've ever visited one of the charity shops, they are full of designer gear. I've seen suits for a thousand pounds. It's pretty amazing. Stella McCartney shoes, you name it. If we see one, we're going in for sure. Here we go, Holland Park. I've actually stayed at that tourist hotel once actually. Back in, I think, 2008, I went to a gig at the Royal Albert Hall and uh, we had some friends coming down and we all stayed there. It was pretty cool, if I remember right. 15 quid a night, probably a lot more now, but I just remember it was a really cool place. Okay, five minutes in and I've got no idea where these Japanese gardens are, but I can see mega mansions and a dog as well. Spot the dog. This incredible building is actually the youth hostel. I was thinking it might be one of the royal residences, but yeah, it's actually the youth hostel. Looks like they normally have a pool as well. It must be closed for the winter. Isn't that the most beautiful youth hostel you've ever seen? in here. Kind of hard to believe we're in London right now. Like a mini maze. Times like this that are really miss Rachel. So sorry she can't be here by the way, she's in Leeds for work. But we'll come back for sure when we're not filming. I think there's like a Tai Chi class going on. <laughs> beautiful building is the Holland Park Orangery. Now there's not that many oranges left at all. 
This is a particularly beautiful one. There's another one, I believe, in Kew Gardens as well. But this one was used to host all of the receptions and balls that Lord and Lady Holland had when they lived in the park. Right, let's try and take a peek. And if you can see that, there was super suited guys having a bottle of wine next to a roaring fire. I'm totally doing this day wrong. I have to say, this is possibly the most beautiful park I've been to in London. I can't believe, never really explored it. It's incredible. These are the depictions of all the summer balls and you can see the sundial here. It's the same one as over there. Okay, right, I get a bit thirsty now, so let's go and find the cafe. I'm sure it won't be as beautiful as the rest of the park, but who knows? I really do miss Rachel now actually, looking at all those cakes. I don't have a sweet tooth, but she's got the biggest sweet tooth in the world and there's no way she'd be able to resist. Oh, it's getting chilly now, but that was nice. That was such a lovely cafe. Right, let's see where we're going. It's over here. And going here. Yeah. Rachel always takes the mickey out of me for using those public maps. She thinks it's a bit outdated and you could just use your phone. I mean, she's got a point to be fair. <laughs> This is truly one of the best things about these London parks. Nature just lives freely in them. This is cool. This is Sean Henry's famous walking man statue. Pretty cool, right? been keen to see this for a while so this incredible garden was gifted by the city of Kyoto in 1992 to commemorate the relationship between them and Great Britain. Don't know if we gave anything back, I hope we did because it's pretty amazing. I think the last time I came to a place this tranquil was a monastery in Thailand. Quite a few people here, but it's silent. Apart from me, of course. It's completely silent. So, I mean, look at the trees as well. This incredible tree here. Just amazing. So beautiful. Is that the people that were doing Tai Chi? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It could be. Could be. like being back in Asia. Ch 
check out this guy here. I wasn't sure if he was real, but he most definitely is. Then we have the Fukushima garden, which is another gift from the Japanese. I'm not sure if you remember that terrible disaster in 2011, the worst recorded earthquake on record in Japan, it wreaked havoc on the country. And shortly after that, there was a nuclear power plant disaster uh, caused by the earthquake that still to this day is the biggest nuclear accident since Chernobyl. It was terrible. And um, yeah, the Japanese needed support. Incredibly tranquil and beautiful here, uh, but it's very sad to meditate on why the garden's here. Still hard to believe we're in central London of all places. Well, west, you know what I mean. Statues of two tortoises. Pretty neat. Well, goodbye Holland Park for now. These houses, man. <laughs> Stop it, they're ridiculous. A classic style to them as well. Don't really see these houses, London to be honest. Maybe, maybe in places like Surrey, but definitely not in London. This is the first time I've seen them here, but they're so beautiful. So whoever lives in these houses, I hope your life is happy. I hope it's as amazing as it looks. All right, we've officially arrived at the land of the big mansion. Like that one, for example. This is the neighborhood where people like David Beckham, Madonna, Simon Cowell live, Richard Branson as well. And it's easy to see why, not just because the houses are huge, but also mainly as well, it feels like a little village around here. It's not that noisy, but seriously, it does not feel like a really touristy part of London. And it must be that that appeals, not just the incredible houses. One of the strangest thing about this street, Melby Road, is actually quite a typical London thing. So we've got these mega mansions. Like those, for example. And then we also have this. Just typical, like post-war housing. I'm not sure if it's social housing. Uh, probably not, but you can get them in areas like this. So yeah, it's, I think it, that sort of thing stems from bomb damage as well during the war. When it comes to architecture, they've kind of moved on from the original styles. So that would have been the style, I suppose, in the, in the 50s when they rebuilt them. The reason I wanted to come to Melby Road is these two houses coming up. If you have even half an eye on celebrity gossip, you will know about these two Holland Park houses, like mega houses. So this is the tower house. This is Jimmy Page. Yes, the Led Zeppelin's Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page's 13th century Gothic castle, I suppose. Yeah, it is a castle. Complete with stained glass windows, winding staircases, everything, you name it. It was built by the eccentric designer Burgess, but he only lived in it for like three years. Uh, it's passed through the hands of a lot of famous people, but it's, it's currently owned by Jimmy Page. And the reason you may know that is because the next door to it, that house just there, is owned by Robbie Williams. And there's an ongoing dispute between Robbie Williams and Jimmy Page because Robbie Williams wants to build an extension underneath the house and Jimmy Page has vehemently opposed it. So well known around here. There's sometimes two or three blue packs on each house. <laughs> Thank you.
even though we've seen beautiful news cottages, incredible mansions, and completely over the top castles, those residences are still not in London's most expensive street. In fact, this is London's most expensive street. This is Fillymore Gardens, just off Kensington High Street. Take a look around, see if you think it's worth it. I mean, to live here, we're talking nigh on billionaire rich. What makes it London's richest street, therefore Britain's richest street, is the fact that last year, in 2022, the average house price value was 24 million pounds. Again, it's just so quiet here. Just off the bustling high street, but what you can hear is the odd Uber. Oh, not the Uber actually, the odd black cab driving through Puddle. That's pretty much it workmen as well nothing else pretty amazing but is it 24 million pounds amazing i don't know let me know coming to a natural end for the video however one other place i want to visit i've heard about this place but i've never been same as the japanese garden really really curious by it so yeah let's stop wasting time let's just go in fashion so you may have seen these definitely seen those before and these as well yeah, I don't think those boots would suit me these are nice though Japanese kitchenware here we have art utensils as well pastels very vibrant colors That was like a Murakami book cover. So basically I went for what's called a hojicha latte. So we've all had matcha green tea, right? This is kind of similar, but it's roasted green tea. Roasted green tea leaves, uh, roasted so much that they almost have like a, a coffee aftertaste. Had a cold with oat milk and water, no sweetener at all, just as it is. Uh, it's pretty amazing, I have to say. I wish I could describe the taste to you a little better. So, you know how you get roasted coffee. Uh, you taste it and it's lovely, but it can be bitter and it can have an aftertaste. Well, just imagine the roasted flavor, but without the bitterness and without the aftertaste. And the oat milk actually gives it a bit of sweetness to make up for it. 
It's addictive. It's really nice. It's, do you know what? I was crashing a bit, to be honest. But this has really given me uh, the lift up I needed, to be honest. So it's 4 95 well spent, I think. Another quiet part of Kensington and here ends the video. Yeah, I'm gonna sit here and relax read for about half an hour. Then I'm gonna go to the gym and uh, try and get in that steam room. Nice view here. That's a really quiet part of Kensington. So yeah, I'm gonna try and enjoy the relative peace and quiet. Just gone 8pm and and just leave at the gym. Don't know why we do it to ourselves, eh? But to be fair, I probably spent more time in the jacuzzi and the steam and sauna than I did doing anything else. Thanks again for joining me. It's a really, really fun day. And I hope to see you guys again soon. Take care.